In this video, I'm going to share the six most common planting design mistakes I see home gardeners make when designing a garden bed. So planting design is designing inside of the garden beds and what your plants look like when they're blooming together. This is one of my favorite topics and I can't wait to get into these six mistakes. My name is Amy and over at prettypurpledoor.com, I help home gardeners design landscapes that are uniquely you. So let's get into these top six mistakes and how I would fix them. Mistake number six is not using the garden pyramid for planting success. If you don't use this pyramid, you're likely gonna end up with a visually unbalanced landscape that's lacking depth and interest. So the pyramid basically helps you make sure that you have a good mix of different plant types, different heights and different shapes so that your garden is beautiful and layered. And it'll even show you the different ratios of each type of plant you need to make sure that you're creating a balanced and beautiful mixed border. So the uh, different layers of the pyramid are as follows. The first layer is incorporating ornamental trees, smaller trees into your landscape. Second is evergreen shrubs and other evergreen trees. Layer three is perennial deciduous shrubs. And these are shrubs that will bloom or have interesting features about them, but they may lose their leaves in the winter. The next layer is perennial plants and flowers. And this is where most people focus the majority of their landscape on. And finally, ground covers, vines, and grasses, which will add textural interest. It will cover the ground so you don't have as many weeds. It will create vertical interest for you so that you have things up higher in the landscape. So those are the layers and you can check out that pyramid. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If you want to dive deeper into creating a beautiful landscape that looks great in every single season, you can check out my Design Your Four Season Garden course. In this course, I walk you through the framework I use using this garden pyramid to create magazine worthy spaces for gardens of any size. So you could use this and you can shrink it down and scale it up to work for a garden of any size or shape. The next mistake I see homeowners make is not using enough of each plant. So planting multiples of each plant. And this is a really common mistake. It's really fun to go to the garden center and pick lots of different plants, but I would encourage you to choose multiples of each plant that you're planting to create a larger impact. Landscapes are very large and planting beds are typically viewed from a distance. So you need those multiple plants in order to create the impact that you're looking for visually with the color and things like that. So no more onesie twosie as I call it, no more grabbing one or two of each plant. Try to grab a lot of the same plant to create that great interest. I have a video on this channel. You could check it out up here or up here somewhere, and that will show you different ways to arrange these multiples of plants inside of garden beds. So that's a really great video to check out after you get through this tip one, if you're interested in creating groupings and drifts of plants. Mistake number four is not planting for four seasons of interest. And this is super common when you're not considering all of the different seasons where plants bloom, you can end up with a garden that looks great in one season and then it sort of just falls off and looks kind of meh the rest of the year. So most perennial plants and shrubs and things that will come back each year, they have bloom times. Some of them will only bloom for two weeks or three weeks. If you're lucky, you can get some that'll do six or eight weeks long. But unless you're using annuals, you're going to have to do a little bit of planning for your space so that you have interest that's continuing throughout each season. Uh, this is such a common mistake that I actually feature it in my three gardening secrets training. And this is an hour long training where I cover really common mistakes that I see home gardeners make. So check out that free training in the description below. But basically the reason that this is a big problem is that most people will go to the garden center in the beginning of spring and try to buy all the plants that they need to fill in their landscape. And honestly, this doesn't really work unless it's a very, very large nursery. Most nurseries will only have the plants out that are blooming at the time that you visit. So when you're trying to plant a landscape that will bloom from spring through fall and you're there in the spring, you're not going to get any summer blooming or fall blooming plants, not to mention early spring mid spring, late spring, early summer, mid summer, late summer, on and on and on. So there's different plants that will bloom in different seasons. And in order to get all of these, you likely will need to create a plan or at the very least visit the garden center multiple times throughout the year so that you can get plants that are in bloom in different seasons of the landscape. And this leads us to the next mistake. Mistake number three is lacking a color scheme or a theme for your garden. So when you're choosing those plants in the different seasons and going back and forth to the garden center, it's important to have a theme or some sort of color scheme in mind so that you know which plants to pick and which plants are gonna flow and work in the landscape design that you're creating. So when you're new to color theory and design, my best advice is to keep things simple. This doesn't mean it has to be super restrictive or boring though. You can always add to your color scheme as you get more comfortable with color and how colors work together. 
And there are so many different types of color schemes to choose from, such as using cool and calm colors, using vibrant and energizing colors, using colors that support a theme like your favorite sports team or something like that or using colors that play off of each other's strengths to make them look brighter. So there's so much that you can do with color and it's definitely something that I highly recommend you look into before you start picking all of your plants so that you have that look and feel that you're really going for. The first thing I would do before I select the color scheme is to collect some inspiration photos, find photos of gardens that you like and start to piece together what you like about those gardens and what's interesting. And do they have common colors? Do they all have purple in them? Are they all vibrant and energizing with reds, yellows, and oranges in them? And once you start collecting these photos into a folder or something, you'll start to see what you're gravitating towards as far as color schemes. You might like something monochromatic or you might like something with lots of different wild colors in it. It's really a personal choice, but knowing that color scheme ahead of time is gonna help you a lot. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to an article all about different color schemes you can use. And again, this is something that we go over in depth in my Design Your Forest Season Garden course. So you may wanna check out that course too if you're ready to start planting. Mistake number two when designing a garden bed is making your garden beds too small. I always recommend that you make your garden beds deep enough to accommodate several rows of plants. So if you wanna simplify this down, think about designing with three rows of plants in mind. And if you have that many plants, you're gonna need at least six to eight feet of depth and sometimes more than that. Uh, the deeper the better is what I always say if you're not restricted by sizing for other reasons like the border of your house or your property line or something like that, always make them a little bit deeper than what you think you're going to need. So just as an example, if you have three rows of plants and the back row are shrubs that are five feet wide and then the middle row are smaller shrubs or perennials that are three feet wide and then you have a row of two feet wide perennials in the front or annuals, that's 10 feet of depth already. And that doesn't even count um, if you have to leave some space between your foundation of your house and the first row of plants. So you may even need 12 feet of depth for that. So I think this is a really common mistake. If you want that lush layered look to your landscape, you have to accommodate at least three rows of plantings. And those plantings, when you start adding up the sizes, it, it will make it a lot deeper than you're originally anticipating. Another tip that you can use if you're not exactly sure how deep you need the garden beds to be is to create a garden bed, but use a temporary border like a half moon edger and just edge out the garden bed. So that way in the future, if you realize that you don't have enough space, you can always expand your beds out. So before you start installing really high-end edging or having curbing poured in concrete or something like that, just use a temporary border for a little while until your plants grow in and you can get a better feel for how deep those garden beds need to be. And the number one mistake is incorrect plant spacing. Improper spacing between your plants can lead to overcrowding or different sparse areas in your landscape. And it really can affect the visual balance of the landscape and sometimes even the health of your plants. So as a rule of thumb, you have to space the plants according to their full grown size, which is typically provided on the plant label. Most plant labels will also give you a recommended spacing size to go from. So if you want a more natural or cottage style garden, you can usually plant these plants a little bit closer, uh, more tightly planted. And if you want a more traditional or modern look, you can space them a little further away from each other than what the plant spacing guidelines on the plant label will say. So that's just a rule of thumb. And I've also created an entire video explaining plant spacing. So you could watch that somewhere up here. I'll put a link to it. And I think that people mess up the plant spacing so much because they're not going by the full mature size of the plant. So everything looks really spaced out and sparse in the beginning. So you have a tendency to plant a little closer. And that's totally okay. I do that sometimes too in my own landscape where I'll plant perennials and things a little bit closer to each other. And then after two or three years, I'll divide those and spread them out as they grow. The other thing that you can do to fill in that sparse area in between your plants is to supplement with annuals for the first few years. As your plants are growing in and maturing, you can just uh, grow some annuals from seed or buy some packs of annuals at the garden center or nursery. And you can fill in with those and that will give your landscape like a nice, full look while the other plants are maturing and you don't have to wait years for everything to fill in. So that's just another tip for you. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you have more tips to share about designing garden beds and planting design in general. And I have lots more mistake videos that I've been sharing and I'll leave a link to one right here so you could watch that. And I'll see you over in that video.